You really gotta think about how like brutal the winter in the Northeast is. Really gotta think about it. like winter in the Northeast makes it appealing to go to the state of Florida. <laughs> yeah, Florida, the place from the news. <laughs> people are leaving here to go to there. That's not a good sign. It's so funny. All people do is shit on Florida. All we do is read insane articles about people from Florida. In January, we take one step outside and we're like, let's go to Florida. <laughs> I don't care what's going on down there. I got to get out of here. But thank you for coming up. Uh, yeah, I don't know, 20, 29, getting a little older. Not that old, but a little older. We're like, my excitement for things starting to transfer. You know, like the way I used to react going to uh, parties, I now react that same way going to sleep. <laughs> like I got home a couple nights ago, laid down in bed and said out loud, let's fucking go. <laughs> this is going to be epic. Like just... Sad stuff to get excited about. I love sleep because I'm an adult. And adults love sleep because being awake is when you have to experience life. Uh, that's really what it is. It's an escape from life when you think about it. Sleep's a good testament to how tough adults are. And it's also a good testament to how amazing children's lives are. Adults love sleep. Kids' lives are so amazing they hate going to bed. What? Try putting a nine-year-old to bed. You're like, it's time for bed. They're like, no! Please, just 20 more minutes of life. Like, they love it here. They'll negotiate with their parents to stay in life for longer. Can't get them to go to bed. And then they wake up early, voluntarily. Kids pop up at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Like, yeah, I'm back. All right. Free food, no job. I'm going to wake up mom and dad. They're missing out. I mean, this is amazing. Being awake as an adult, way less fun. It was bedtime for me. I'm like, thank God. I get to temporarily die. You know, like, God, I could use a coma. You know, just really shut it down for a while. I'll see so much. If I ever woke up from a coma, I'd go back. I would snooze a coma. <laughs> Even after a year, I'd be like, just five more minutes. I just want... Not moving in general is just pretty great. You know, like, if I ever was in a coma and I woke up from a coma, I don't think I'd tell people I woke up from the coma. I gotta just pretend to still be in the coma if the doctor came in the room. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I just lie in bed all day every day what a life some people idolize Tom Brady my idol's the grandparents from Willy Wonka what a life they carved out for themselves Grandpa Joe what a piece of shit <laughs> that guy was lies in bed for 20 years Charlie comes home with a ticket he's like oh I can walk yeah you could always walk this isn't a miracle you're a scumbag <laughs> I like going to sleep. I like going to sleep. But I also like to stay up late. I like those late hours. I like those late hours. It's fun. Something about being awake after midnight just makes me want to fill my head with the most useless information humanly possible. It'd be so late. Like, everyone in the Eastern time zone's asleep. And I'm in bed watching, like, a TikTok of how butter is packaged. I'm just like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> It'd be so late. Like, farmers are eating breakfast. And I'm like, it's so much butter. <laughs> Last week at 2 a.m. on a Wednesday, I watched a six-minute video of how to milk a cow. <laughs> Never even been to a farm. But I thought, let's fill my brain with this information. Who knows? You never know. I don't know. Maybe some, one day someone had me at gunpoint. Like, fucking milk it. And I'll be like, all right. <laughs> they gotta watch that video. <laughs> you know when you're up too late is when, like, you're watching, uh, like, cable TV and you see one of those, like, never-ending infomercials. No one's talking about you pass by it, you buy it like an hour later, it's still on, and you're like, how many testimonials could there possibly be for this Swiffer? Infomercials, infomercials are an easy target, but they're very funny. My favorite part of infomercials are like the end of infomercials, like the if you call right now segment, where they just offer you a bunch of free shit. I've never seen such desperation in my entire life. They'd be like, call the number below and buy our blender. And if you call right now, we'll give you nine free blenders <laughs> and our blender cleaning spray. And you can have like Seinfeld box set DVD out of, and my laptop and you can bang my wife. Please, just someone buy my fucking blender. <laughs> they, uh, sleep's great. Dreams are a bit much. <laughs> Life's crazy enough while I'm awake. And I gotta close my eyes, fall asleep, and my brain's like, psst, hey. You remember our childhood mailman? Well, we're gonna go snorkeling with him. It's gonna be, gonna be pretty weird. And we're gonna judge a spelling bee with last night's Uber driver. 
Then we're gonna fall off a cliff and wake up sweating. It's gonna be, it's gonna be quite a ride. We're all such idiots while we're asleep because like dreams are so insane and we can't tell they're dreams. Just like, there's so many red flags where I should be like, you know, something's off. If I'm just walking around like, just a normal day, checks out. Time to give my friends on to piggyback around my high school science lab. I never learn my lesson. I wake up every day like, oh, duped again. I should have known. I mean, a blowjob cafe? I should have known. Yeah, I'm getting a little older. Uh, I, can, I'm telling, I'm telling, I'm telling, I can tell I'm getting a little older. I'm starting to carry around Tums just in case. <laughs> the just in case part is what's important. Like, I have two in my pocket right now. And I'm not planning on eating anything spicy. I, you never know. Tums are uh, great, though. I love Tums. Oh, time I was at a concert, and uh, I like, oh, wasn't feeling well, so I popped in one of my ETs, emergency Tums. <laughs> I popped in, and this random guy next to me turns to me and goes, yo, can I get some of that? <laughs> I was like, sure, man. I gave it to him. He was like, thank you. This is going to be awesome. You're the man. So clearly he thought it was drugs. I was such an idiot. I thought he just really wanted a tum. He was like, is this good stuff? Is it strong? I was like, oh yeah, extra strength. <laughs> so I gave it to him. Half hour later, he looks over me. He's like, I don't feel it at all. I thought he was talking about the heartburn. So I was like, good. The tums are working. <laughs> I yelled back at him, aren't tums the best? He was like, I thought you said that was acid. I was like, no, sorry. Antacid. Sorry. <laughs> It's loud. I... <laughs> I'm a little older. Some people I know are starting to get married. Some are starting to have kids. A couple of people starting to have kids. I don't want. Shouldn't have a kid right now. Like you can tell. Like you should want to have a kid because you want to start a family. Only reason I would want a kid right now is just to name them something funny. <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> Which would be funny now, but I think I'd regret it eventually. You know, feel bad for my kids. Would have to like explain that to people. Someone would go up to my daughter like, "Hey, what is Beth short for?" She'd be like. Oh, it's Beth Amphetamine. <laughs> My dad's a comedian. He thinks that's hilarious. <laughs> Which is why you've never heard of him. <laughs> no, I should not. I'm not responsible enough yet to have a kid. One day, maybe. But like, no, I shouldn't have a kid yet. But you know what's crazy? The fact that I just could. <laughs> no background checks? Like, really? Like, it's... Raising kids so important, and I just could. That's crazy. Where are our priorities aside? If I want a baby, there are no hurdles. If I want a concert ticket, I have to prove I'm not a robot. Like, wait. I have to sit there like there's a sliver of the stop sign in the photo. Does that count? I mean, how many am I supposed to click? Little, there's some, I think there's some upsides to. Uh, being an adult that you don't appreciate, though, you know, like, uh, you no longer have to hide being drunk from your parents anymore. That was a doozy. Now you do whatever you want. Kick your door open, puke on the floor, sleep in the sink. It doesn't matter, you know? Remember coming home drunk in high school? Before you go in your house, you just stand outside and practice talking. Like, hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> ah! The movie was great. Brian's mom says hi. Ah! <laughs> There's like nine pieces of gum in my mouth. She's like, oh, Sally sells she's like, fuck it, let's do this. <laughs> and I'd always like go in the house and try to sound sober, but I'd always overshoot it and talk way too proper. Sound even more suspicious. Come in the house like I was from Victorian England. Like, the night was splendid, mother. <laughs> Thank you for inquiring. <laughs> of course I'm not drunk. <laughs> Let me smell your breath. Then I like go in my kitchen and make a drunk snack. Like that wouldn't blow my cover. Mom walks by, she's what are you eating? I'm like, wow, I always get my pizza and frosting. What are you talking about? It's a normal snack. <laughs> Drinking's fun. Uh, being hungover is tough. Uh, not a hot take, obviously, but being hungover stinks, especially when you're around people who are not hungover. Because like, it sucks watching people be productive when you just can't do that. <laughs> like, well, I remember one time I went out and my roommates did not go out. And the next day we woke up just on completely different ends of the spectrum. Like I was just in the living room rotting on the couch like a corpse. And he came in with just like Joel Osteen energy. Just like, hey, let's attack the day. Like one of those, you know? And he was like, I'm gonna go on a two mile jog. You wanna come? And I was like, listen, I don't wanna be dramatic, but I would rather dip my face in honey and headbutt a beehive. <laughs> I could go on a jog with you right now. 
He was like, come on, it's only two miles. I was like, only two miles? I haven't changed the channel in four hours. Because the clicker's on the other couch. Two miles, I can't make it slightly out of reach. I wish I knew you were home. I wouldn't have ordered Domino's just so the delivery guy could hand me the remote. I didn't even order food. I just wrote the delivery instructions. Can you come hand me my remote? It's fun. I like uh, growing up. It's fun. Weed. I don't smoke weed. I have before. It's pretty harmless. But growing up, I was very afraid of weed because of those commercials with the girl on the couch. I don't know if any of you remember these. It's worthy of YouTube. It's very funny. But there used to be these anti-pot commercials. And it would be like, all these in like dark, ominous living room, and there'd be like a girl on a couch, but it was like just her skin, like in a puddle. <laughs> so it was the girl on the couch. That's the girl who smoked pot. And then her sober friend would come into frame and be like, Kimberly used to be fun. <laughs> but then she started smoking pot. <laughs> now she can't do anything anymore. It's like, that girl can't do anything anymore because she has no bones. <laughs> That's clearly a separate medical condition. That's not from weed. How long has she been sitting there? Don't make a commercial. Call an ambulance. Looks pretty serious. But those commercials are just so dramatic and inaccurate. And like, show a commercial of what uh, like weed's actually like. I want to see the same commercial where the like, girl has all her bones. And she just turns to her friend and is like, let's watch Planet Earth. Like, that's a weed commercial. That's the whole thing. They should be like, this is what's going to happen when you smoke pot. No, are fish homeless? <laughs> or always at home? And that's the, that's the end of the commercial. I was, uh, recently I was like, uh, thinking recently just how much like technology has evolved like in the past like 15, 20 years. It's crazy, even in such a small period of time. Like remember when you had to like go online? Now we just are online. Like it used to be a thing you had to do, you went online. Now you just pull out your phone, you're on the internet. When I was in middle school, if you wanted to get online, you had to go on your family computer and hope no one was on the house phone. That was the only way to do it, which I always thought was funny, by the way, that like, these people created an internet. Do you know how hard this? And then they just got stumped by the house phone. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out. They're saying, you're gonna have to do it separately. We're exhausted. I don't, I don't. But you had to do that. You, had, you couldn't be on the phone and online at the same time. I remember being 12 years old, like, get off the phone! I need to change my AIM profile. I just broke up with my girlfriend of two days. Who knows the lyrics to Good Riddance by Green Day? It's crazy. There's obstacles now. You can't, like, I feel like people don't appreciate the luxury of free Wi-Fi. In this day, like, you can go on the internet on your phone for free. That's crazy to me. Like, if kids don't appreciate, like, if, how scary it was to be on your parents' phone plan in, like, 2008 and have a flip phone and accidentally go on the internet. Remember the internet button on a flip phone? Terrifying. I pressed that thing once and never again. After my dad got the phone, but was like, who went on the internet for three and a half seconds? Now I have to sell the car. It's $80,000 a minute. I hope you're happy. Everything's so easy now, like getting online, music, like Apple Music, Spotify, so easy. Like, again, when I was in middle school, if you wanted music, you had to download it illegally onto your family computer from LimeWire. Yeah. And every time you download something from LimeWire, it gave your computer a little bit of herpes. <laughs> until one day the computer just stopped working and you had to act like you didn't know why. <laughs> like, why is the computer so slow? I don't know, what's a computer? I don't even know. I'd be like 12 years old, just like, Dell sucks, I don't know. <laughs> if you're not familiar with LimeWire, LimeWire was like this giant database of like illegal songs and videos. And how LimeWire worked is would be like, all right, I want to find a song, search. And LimeWire would be like, all right, here's mostly porn. <laughs> and he's like, no, I just want the song I typed in. And they'd be like, oh, it's in there somewhere. You're gonna have to poke around. And so you sometimes you're gonna click on the file to see if it was a song or a video. And if you guessed wrong, you learned a lot. <laughs> One wrong click, gaping butthole. I'd be like, I'm 12, I just wanted to do Blink-182 song. It was great. Anything you typed in LimeWire, there was porn related to the words you typed in. It was insane. You couldn't type anything in. You'd be like, red hot chili peppers. You'd be like, hot redhead gets fucked with a pepper. And you're like, what? How, 
does that exist? That's so ridiculous. What are the odds? You're like, Matchbox 20. It's like 20 guys come on a box of matches. You're like, that is so specific. No way that exists. Some music I couldn't even listen to because I knew the results would be too inappropriate just based on the band's name. Growing up, I never got to listen to The Strokes. <laughs> Alice in Chains, forget about it. <laughs> Learned the hard way, I couldn't search the pant cream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a little wrong. But I'm not, I'm, say I keep saying I'm getting older. I'm not that old though, but sometimes I wonder like what the world's gonna be like when like millennials and Gen Z are like the senior citizens. I just think it's gonna be funny. Cause like people, we're not gonna change. It's just gonna be hilarious. Just a bunch of 90 year olds walking around with IVs like, my NFT is lit. Like, like, <laughs> people listening to music like, put on WAP. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's just gonna be a new type of old person. It's gonna be funny. You know? Just be, and the world's gonna have to adapt to cater to old millennials. It's gonna be funny. I mean, in 50 years, you might see commercials like, it's a cane and a selfie stick. <laughs> if you call right now, we'll give you nine free sticks. <laughs> People will still be talking shit about each other's social media. Like, you see the picture Sarah posted wishing Brad a happy birthday? She doesn't care it's his birthday. She's just showing off her new hip. <laughs> Very transparent. We all know why you posted that. I think my least favorite thing about social media is like that narcissism of it. People just will post anything just to show themselves off. People love getting likes. People just love getting likes. I don't even think people would do certain things if they couldn't post about it. Like, I think if social media ceased to exist, I think there would be a 30% drop in marathon participation. <laughs> I think everyone in their 20s would be like, well, now what's the point in running? I can't post a photo of myself at the finish line drinking a craft beer <laughs> to show everyone I'm as fun as I am fit. <laughs> I get it, though. You like attention for your accomplishments. So it feels good when like, you do something good and like, people know about it. That feels good, you know? So I think it actually would have been kind of annoying to maybe like, do something impressive before technology and social media because it would take people a while. It's like, like if I invented something right now, I could like repost something and I know everyone would see it and that would make me feel good. It feels good. But if it was like 1930 and I was the one who just invented scotch tape, pretty big deal. I bet I would run into people I know before they caught wind of my accomplishment and I'd just be standing there like, they don't know how amazing. I feel like I would just be steering every conversation towards tape <laughs> so I could bring it up and impress them. I'd be insufferable. I'd be on a first date. She'd be like, I feel like we're really bonding. I'd be like, I know. It's like some sort of adhesive. <laughs> what do you want to drink? I'm going to get a scotch. I, I just go get there early, rip her menu in half. She sits down, she's like, it's weird. I'm like, I actually have something. It's... <laughs> I mean, like, if I climbed Mount Everest before social media, I'd want everyone to know, but I want to brag about it. I'd just be finding terrible segues. People come up to me like, hi. I'd be like, you want to know what's hi? <laughs> People love likes. You can learn stuff from, from likes, though. You know, like, I was talking to a girl recently. She was like, I wish I knew which guys want to hook up with me. I wish they would just tell me. And I was like, you just defined an Instagram like. Like, what are you talking about? If a guy likes your photo, he doesn't care about the photo. If a guy likes it, he's just reminding you he would have sex with you. That's all. A like on your photo just means still alive, still would. That's all it means. Guys, guys don't care about the photo. I'm not sitting there like, oh, perfect filter for that burrata. Oh, God, sick boomerang. No. I, uh, I don't like following women on Instagram, mostly just because pictures of hot women upset me. <laughs> Some guys follow these like, models on Instagram and they're always showing, they're, like, why? They're always showing me, like, dude, check out I'm like, no, I'm having a good day. <laughs> why would I want to see something amazing that I'll never have? <laughs> That's torture. If I was allergic to dairy, I wouldn't follow a cheesecake account <laughs> to keep tabs on what I'm missing out on. Also, fellas, stop showing me these pictures in public. There's no upside. The guys are like, dude, check out this chick. I'm like, cool, thanks for the boner at Chipotle. <laughs> now I have to order at a 45 degree angle. 